Time this evening, which is REZ 2016-2, excuse me, I messed up, okay, it's line item number three, I'm sorry, sir, yes, sir. which is REZ 2016-19, Turnberry at Thompson. Yes, sir, this is our, excuse me, before you start, yes, sir. I'm going to be recusing myself, I do have a conflict of interest, I'll do some work for the conflict. I will not be a part of this. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, our last county case, uh, Turnberry at Thompson. Ultimately, the request here is to rezone the subject property from EA or five acre zoning to R21 or typically half acre zoning for the development of a residential subdivision. You can see that we have had some updates that we've tried to disseminate. Um, the range of prices for the homes around Barber Circle, uh, the requested updates from the developer about the housing construction type, and then finally, one of the letters of opposition that we were given from uh, the applicants to disseminate to you. Beyond that, we have continued to address phone calls about people asking questions, mostly in opposition, but that has gone on throughout the week, as has some additional email communication with the county commissioners about points of opposition for the request. Um, with that, as far as uh, slides within the presentation, we have an aerial, uh, the proposed zoning, we have the future development map showing you the rural residential. We did have an updated site plan from the applicant's engineer today. The overall um, development didn't change, but I asked for a digital copy just so you could see that as a point of reference. Half acre development uh, internal to those horseshoe drives as well as two larger two plus acre uh, properties along 41. And then finally, um, there's been talk about the precedent area. This is the area in red that I talk about with the potential precedent being set. That's Thompson Road to the south and Ahara to the north. Uh, it also shows the <coughs> overall zoning and utilities within the area. And then this one shows the same depiction, but just with a future development map so you can see the overall area. Uh, with that, that's all the slides we have. We'll try to address any questions that you may have. Uh, but ultimately, those are the updates, and we do ready for your consideration tonight. Okay, you said it was two, two and a half acre lot? I, I must have been. Ah, yes, sir. If you look on the very eastern portion, um, I know at the work session I was able to show you a copy of a site plan they turned in. We were able to get a digital copy, but they added color to it. On the very eastern border of the property, where it abuts 41, there are two larger lots. I think they're two and a half acres is what is being proposed. There's structures on there presently? Yes, sir. There's a structure at least on the northern one. And I think that's the existing homestead house. But we just received this today. I just wanted to get a digital copy of that site plan we saw last week. And this is, this is, we're talking about community water and septic tank? Is that what a proposal is? Yes, sir. To get this density, they would have to get at least a community water system and septic tanks. Yes, sir. Commissioners, any questions for staff? How many lots is that? Uh, Commissioner, I think this one shows actually 36. I think no. this plan shows 36 It was at the work session, it was a large <coughs> black and white site plan. And I didn't have a smaller copy, this is what they gave us. So I, I asked their engineer, you know, could I have a copy so I can show this, and this is what he sent me to me. I don't recall seeing the site plan there, but that was that's Um, the staff recommendations are broken down by division, <clears throat> planning and zoning recommended denial, uh, engineering, health department, fire rescue, and inspections and utilities recommended for approval. Sure, and I, I can speak for planning. I think the main concern was the proposed density for the area is not consistent with the existing development and it's not consistent with the plans the county has for this area either. So I think the main focus was the density that was proposed was something that was beyond what staff felt like was appropriate for the area. Just because 
the clarification, mm -hmm. you mentioned density, and, and I, I know what it's what we have in our package, what proposed. When I see we got some additional information as yes, far sir. as the footprint of the houses going forward. Yes, sir. If, what would be your recommendation as far as the density? To me, we offer the developer RA zoning, which is two and a half acre zoning. There also has been quite a bit of discussion about what about one acre zoning, which is what Barber Circle, Circle has across the street. Um, I cannot speak for zoning. I'm not quite ready to recommend for R1 in the area. I just think that's still something we need to be careful about because of the thousand acres to the north. But it will be something that I believe R1 is better than R21. Okay, so I'm just curious, the R21 that you would like to see? No, sir. I think R1 is not appropriate. I think R1 is debatable, and I think RA is something that I would recommend for. RA is something we've had success with in the past. The last two rezoning cases in this area, we were able to get RA zoning approved, but that's for two and a half acre lots. The developer has expressed some opposition to RA zoning as well as R1 zoning. So, so, the, so the, the recommended zoning, is there any uh, condition, if you will, mm -hmm. for the size of the structure placed on that? I don't think so from a planning standpoint because I'm not questioning the developer's quality of construction or the size of the home. I'm questioning the amount of homes. I think the, the amount of, I think the size of the home that's going to go here, if it's approved, will be something that is not affordable. It's going to be a nicer home for Lowndes County. But I think the issue is how many homes are going there, the density of the homes. Jason, what, is, what are the, across the street, across Thompson Road, mm -hmm. Barber Circle, what are the size, what are the lot sizes there? The lot sizes there are one acres or more, one or more acres, it's R1 zoning. And in the current zoning EA, you said what's the lot size required? Typically it's five acres, ma'am. Um, so R1 would have been a, a more appropriate request? More appropriate than R21, yes ma'am. Uh, Jason, across the road on 41, mm -hmm. what are the lot sizes there? Uh, at least one acre. At least one acre. The housing sizes, structure sizes, really seem to range, but the range of values, um, in my notes, I thought it was, you know, the lowest was about 180,000, the highest was, I think, 350 plus. So, I mean, it's a very um, large range within that one neighborhood, but those are what I consider nicer housing, absolutely nicer housing. Is that the question? You used the word affordable. Mm -hmm. So the subdivision that's existing across the street, do you consider those homes affordable? No, sir, I would not. The affordable housing mark, from my standpoint, I know, Celine, we can get very technical with this, Commissioner Gladwin, but to me, the affordable housing needs to be probably below 130000 for me to consider it market rate affordable for a one or two income family in the area. So, so sitting on your side of the desk as far as planning and zoning goes, mm -hmm. if, if, if the developer said I'll do 2.5 acres and do a 1,300 square foot house, you, as far as planning and zoning, you would have no heartburn with that? We don't have a condition at the government level that dictates the minimum square footage for a house, but to me, yes, I would support that. But I know that the market will probably dictate you would have, if someone can pay 2.5 acre for 2.5 acres of land, the house is probably going to be a nicer non-affordable home. And that's just the market of the area. But yes, sir, I would not condition it based on a minimum square footage. I'll be more concerned with the overall density. Any other questions for staff, commissioners? Any other questions? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. At this time, we're wishing, we'll let, uh, receive people wishing to speak in favor of this request. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. State your name and your address for the record, please, ma'am. My name is Sandy Mathis, 64 West Church Street, Lake Georgia. I represent Terry Stoker. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Mathis. Again, this is a request to resolve an EA to R21 for medium density. I have before me today a copy of what you just saw on the screen, but it's marked A through M. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is a tree buffer line north of which Dr. Grow owns property, a tree line to the west of which Dr. Grow owns property, a tree line north of Thompson Road, and this is the subdivision that y'all are talking about, Oak Ridge. Yes, ma'am. 
So we have a tree buckle line on three sides. These two acres, two and a half acres, abuts uh, Highway 41. There is a there is a uh, 50 foot minimum bill line on the west side where Dr. Grove is. There's a 20 foot minimum bill line, and Mr. Stoker is willing to add another 10 feet to the north side of this property. I have to show you a copy, a picture showing the tree lines. This subdivision will be bounded by a green buffer, which is already in effect. There will be no building done within this green buffer. So this subdivision is really shielded from the property owner to the north and the west. It will be shielded from the subdivision to the south. Thompson Road also is uh, curved. It's paved and curved on the north side. There will be two entrances as required by the zone R21. There will be 60 feet on each side. The only tree that would be cut would be to allow the entrances to be put in. Mr. Stoker last week revised his request to show that on one story buildings there would be a minimum of 20,000 20, feet in there. On one and a half to two story, minimum of 2,400 square feet with 1,800 minimum on the bottom floor. The roof pitch has been amended to show an 812. There will be no aluminum or vinyl siding, no exposed concrete. Uh, there will be a six foot privacy fence backing up on these two and a half acres. On both of this, so there will be a six foot wooden privacy fence. So this subdivision will be secluded in a way from if anybody's worried about the, the homes being put in. At the minimum square footage of 2,000 square feet, these will be nice homes that will be put in the subdivision. There will be a community well system. It will be on this lot right here. It's a 1.65 acre lot. It's also a retention, retention pond. So that's where your well will be. There will be street lights installed. There will be a community well. Septic tanks will be put on each lot. Uh, the engineer has already uh, will supply a plant showing where the sector tax will be located if including the <clears throat> See, there's a subdivision on the other side of Highway US 41. It's called Benjamin Hill Subdivision. It is already zoned R21. These are less than one half acre lots in this subdivision. It is about approximately a mile from where this subdivision was located. This is where Turnberry, this is what they can get. So there's already a subdivision with one half acre or smaller lots in the city. There will be no open carports. There will be a two to three car enclosed garage on each lot. I do need to show you that on one of this two and a half acre lot, there will be an entrance off of Thompson right here. So that, that's the two and a half acre lot. That entrance will come off of Thompson. Let's have to stay right there just a second. Jason, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Do we know on this new proposal that she showed us and you showed us what kind of lot width we have a building line? I don't, sir, but based on the engineer of record, they do. Did you know that? I do not. I thought it was. Wait, Jason, I'm sorry. Based on the engineer of record, we've worked with Mr. Vanderwatt before, and he knows our basic standards. I would anticipate the lot width to be at least 100 feet, which is what's required. May I also show you the 12 foot reserve, reserve strip if they were to want to lie in Thompson Road? He's reserved 12 feet from that condition. Hey, one thing she brought up was, was, was Bethany. Is that, a, is that a player in this request at all? That's been mentioned. Um, I show it on this larger map. You can see it to the kind of the southeast of the request. And this map is, is correct. I mean, Bethany Hills is there. They're um, half acre zoning, but I do think they have some lots that are closer to 15,000 square feet. <laughs> It was approved previously. You can see how far away it is from an existing development, but it's around a mile away to the southeast. Does that have water and sewer? Is that septic tank also? It is a community water system and septic tank. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Where is it? I'm sorry. Where is it? It's on Valdale Road. Isn't it? If you look on the map, it's um, if you go east to Valdale Road, and there's a small subdivision with internal roads. Right there. <coughs> but that's on Valdale. It is. It's on Valdale. Yeah. Road. That's right. Up there where the Z is and zoning, right under. That's why you're here. Did I understand you say that is, is the developer's intention to put the six foot privacy fence in front of the two and a half acre lots? Yes, it is. Okay, I've also seen the, the revisions that Jason has provided for us this evening uh, that includes the removal of vinyl siding, aluminum soffits, uh, etc., and going strictly with uh, 812 minimum on roof pitch, concrete siding. I'm just curious, one or two things to, just for myself, uh, is there any is there any condition that, uh, as far as vertical hard surface, brick, stone, or is there any square footage that's going to be applicable to this? Not that I'm aware of. May I ask this for Sure. Did you hear this? Just take your name and address, please, sir. Jerry Stoker. Yes. Uh, 48, 36, Oak Harbor. Mr. Stoker, I asked Ms. Mathis, I, I see that Jason has provided for us mm -hmm. the additional updates as far as uh, what you plan for the subject for square footage and stuff of that nature. You've, been, you've removed the vinyl siding and the aluminum socket. My question to Ms. Mathis was, were you going to include a minimum of vertical hard surface? Brick or brick in our stone? Are you going to you going to have anything on there? A minimal square footage. On the exterior. Yes, sir. Uh, normally, the only area that is um, we normally go with a concrete siding or a brick most of the house. I would say the eight percent, and then the the eaves or the gables in the front of the house. They're normally brick or stone or. But 80% of the house is normally one material, and then the other material would be either like, like the whole house is stucco, so to speak, then maybe 15 or 20% of it would be a brick accent around the windows and things like that. Yeah, I, my question, I suppose, but would, would, would you have any hard burn if the condition is applied to this request that there is a minimum hard vertical surface? But would it be 100 feet, 200 feet? If all the slab has got to be covered in hard surface, would you have any hard burn with that? Or the minimum area? Yes, sir. I mean, if, 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 it's, if, if the condition is attached, it's got to be 150 or 200 square feet of vertical hard surface. We, I would put that in the restrictions as far as how much it, how much area would be when I do the restricted purposes. I would put that. I, mean, I had to go do a minimum guideline. Yes, sir. Like I said, 2,000 square feet heated. And then of that 2,000 square feet heated, then I can put in the restricted purpose how much area of that 2,000 has to be concrete siding, how much can be accented brick, or how much can be accented stone. Okay. Yeah, and, and he asked my question in the treatment. Jason, my question about you is when I ask you the, the, the minimum uh, square, the minimum width at the building line, mm -hmm. I was just curious if we had enough building line to require siding through garages just to enhance the neighborhood more. And I don't know, I don't know if 100 feet is going to be... I know some of those lots exceed 100 feet. Some of them clearly do. Um, if you give me just a minute, I will check on that. Okay. Any questions? I'm, I'm sorry, y'all took most of the time. Did any, any questions for the presenter? I've got one. Commissioner Willis. Uh, Mr. Stoker, would you entertain a um, larger lot size, or you fixed on half acre lot? Would you entertain a larger lot size, Okay. The reason, the reason being. You mean the, a direct driveway off the of Thompson? Yes. That would be the only way you could get in. I can use it. What we did is we did a... Do you have that layout, ma'am? We did a drawing with one acre lots. And when the county, back when they did the paving on the Thompson Road, uh, most of the time, the county... Required, they normally put open ditches on both sides of the road, but 
but in my understanding, um, for some reason, there was a probably a 20 foot wide tree line that was left standing on Thompson Road, and the county curved and guttered that, which is very unusual uh, in the county. Normally, it's either all curving on both sides or it's open ditches on both sides. It's probably very rarely is an open ditch on one side and a curve and gutter on the other side. So, to answer your question, if we did one acre lots, then eight of the lots that I did on the layout would face Thompson Road. And with that being said and done, that whole tree line would have to be cut down. And I, I'm just not interested in. I mean, that was the whole purpose of the county going in and cutting the right away to preserve the trees. Jason, did you see that? This is the first time I've seen this. Excuse me, could I get a call? Yes, sir. And then, if, if, I'm just curious now, since you, know, you brought it to our attention that one acre lots, that option was put on the table. Mm -hmm. What is your thoughts with seven lots running top of the road? It's less than ideal, but if he's going to try to make the property work to be reusable, then I understand why he's doing that. I've seen the engineer approve up to five uh, lots along a county road. Um, seven is, is pushing it, but we got to check with him. But to me, it's not an unreasonable layout to show how they could develop the property. You also know that the two large lots on 41 can now be divided into smaller lots? But, but, they, but they would be entered from it within the subdivision, not on 41. The reason why we did the, on the front, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, sir. the two, two and a half acre lots on the front was to, number one, eliminate having to put a diesel uh, acre lane on Highway 41, which is, uh, in my past experience, we're looking at a minimum of $100,000 to $125,000 just to put an entryway in off the 41 because of the safety requirements. And what you have to be permitted by the state. Uh, it's my understanding that on Cordell Road, that the state is going to allow the purpose of having the Cordell Road is that the state will allow large curb cuts every 2,600 feet, 2,625. So I'm not guaranteed, even if I had a layout showing an entryway out on 41, I wouldn't even be guaranteed that the state would have that entryway. Um, I put the two two and a half acre lots on the front to because the subdivision across the street is on the EA and it's all those lots are two and a half acres, most of them are two and a half acre lots. And I put in my proposal that those <coughs> two lots, there's one lot that's completely vacant, that that house would face 41 with a driveway. Um, coming out on Thompson Road, but that particular house would have to be 2,400 square feet heated, which would coincide with the subdivision across the street. I think that's Wilson, Wilson's estate. The other lots, the two and a half acre lots, got a lot of um, things that need to be pulled down, demolished, and hauled off. There is a great home on the property. Uh, I haven't given it a lot of detail as far as if that house can be renovated at uh, an effective cost. If that house can be renovated, then obviously it would. If it's not, then I would agree that that particular house would be torn down to Moss, completely moved, and uh, in my restrictions, a 2,400 square foot house would also have to be built on that lot. Well, one quick question, Mr. Mathis. Uh, was it, was this New drawing that you presented this evening. Did you tell us how many lots were represented on this one acre? I know we got 36 on what we're looking at this evening. How many are represented on one acre? Oh, I'm sorry. I can count them. I thought you might know. I'm sorry. 24. Okay. So we have a reduction of 12 lots, but we included seven facing Thompson Road. Okay. As, as it's presented tonight, yes, there, is, there is an um, access off of 41 to one of the two and a half acre lots. That access is already there. Going to that brick home is already there. That will remain there. Yes. If on this panel. Based on these questions for the presenters, everybody, thank you both, both very much.
we have elapsed our time as far as those wishing to speak in favor. This time we will ask anyone that is here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward at this time. State your name and address for the record, please, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Mark Barber, and I reside at 5673 Barber Circle, A. Howard, Georgia, 31632. My, my property and home is located right on the, ed, the, the edge of uh, Thompson Road and Barber Circle and Oak Ridge Subdivision. So my home and my property is directly across from the zone, uh, the proposed rezoning and the proposed development. I would like to add tonight, though, that in the essence of time, I've been asked to be the speaker in opposition for our neighborhood. They may regret this later, but this is why you stuck with me. And it was permissible, Chairman, can I ask those here to stand that are in opposition that I'm representing this evening? Briefly, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. So, again, I just want to be understood that I'm not representing the speaking just for the residents of Arbor Circle, but I'm supposed to speak in for folks down Thompson Road Union. The front, the folks in the front, Highway 41, the folks down Bethany Drive, and the folks north of the proposed development. So we're just not here for Barber Circle residents. I would like to state that on the onset of my comments that, that we're not a neighborhood that is opposed to development, and we're starting to be realizing the importance of development uh, to the community. However, we're definitely opposed to a development that requires zoning that is not even a permissible zoning designation in a rural residential character area according to the comprehensive plan. Especially when it's introduced into an existing neighborhood, which is currently zoned for larger lot development and represents a severe departure from the current approved density levels. So I, I don't think Ms. Mathis, who spoke earlier, uh, comparing us to Bethany Hills was quite a fair comparison. There's a little bit of difference in the rural character area there between us and Bethany Hills. I listened to Mr. Davenport's presentation and your questions to him and his comments as well as the work session uh, previously that you had concerning this. Uh, we so I don't know what else I can add to Mr. Davenport, but our concern is that city as well. Uh, we certainly concur with his, his assessment of the rural character area, the rural land use pattern that we have currently in the area. Uh, and, and what most concerningly for us is we're really concerned about the precedent that will set if a higher density R21 is approved. You know, I think when a neighborhood finds out about a rezoning, especially one that drastically increases density levels, as this one does, you can't help but wonder we talk about it something like, what is it going to do to our property value in the area? And I'm not here to discuss property values and all that because to be honest with you, I think as you can see tonight, it's kind of hard for us to kind of debate the folks in favor because it's been constant changes and square footages have changed, materials have changed, what they plan to do at the front of the, uh, the parcel has changed. So I'm not really prepared to discuss that tonight because, again, our concern is the density and the rural flavor of our area. But again, you can't help as a private property owner you work hard for that property, you work hard to maintain that property. So when a, when a rezoning of this sort and, and, and severity is proposed, you got that, I think that's human nature. Then the second is going to be the traffic. And we do feel that there will be some traffic issues out there. Uh, as proposed now, there's a, you know, it could be 70 plus additional uh, vehicles on Thompson Road. And, uh, and trying to get it on 41, so we certainly feel strong about those two areas but even with that you know i began to wonder there's got to be standards guidelines that kind of protect property owners from the, that can answer those kind of questions so what i did is uh you know as I believe i learned more about planning and zoning than i've ever wanted to know during this but planning and zoning or land use issues is basically what it boils down to uh but but given that, I figure there must be some type of guidelines or regulations that planning authorities such as yourself, local governments look at uh, to make those determinations and to protect the current governments that are there when rezoning comes about. And so I searched the current Lowndes County Unified Land Development Code and focused on Section 10.0105, Procedures for Action by the Board of Commissioners. 
which I notice is back here, on the agenda table. And what this section does, it just deals with procedures and things that uh, planning officials take into uh, account when they're looking at rezoning or zoning amendments. So then what I did, I focused my attention on section A6 of that section. And this section actually sets the standard for exercising zoning powers. Again, I know it says for the Board of Commissioners, but I, I'm making the assumption that all the planning professionals look at this. So I didn't want to stand here this evening and talk about things like property values and things like that that may not uh, be what you guys are interested in or what you want to hear about. So if you'll indulge me, I promise you I'll be very quick. There's 14 points, and we have a brief response to each, and I will, I will go quick, I promise. First of these, the existing land use pattern. When you look at the you look at the maps that Mr. Davenport presented, uh, it is obvious that the requested zoning of R21 is definitely not compatible with the current land use pattern. As a matter of fact, the current R21 is not even a permissible permissible zoning designation for a rural residential care area such as ours. Number two, the possible creation of an isolated district unrelated to adjacent and nearby districts. Once again, upon review of the zoning maps that have provided, the proposed R21 zoning would definitely be isolated at the current zoning is for large lot development. For all of the adjacent properties which we've already spoke about tonight, and it's obvious uh, from the map. We certainly uh, believe that, uh, the, that, that this would definitely prove detrimental uh, to our area. Uh, and I don't want to use the term spot zoning, but I will, uh, because we're surrounded. When you look at the map, it's surrounded EA, RA, then over its subdivision is R1. And right in kind of the center of all of our neighborhood it sets these 22, 23 acres. And we want, if you will, excuse the expression, plop R21 zoning, kind of in the center so of, of this rural area. So we certainly believe that would be detrimental to the area and uh, deter folks from that want the large lot development who certainly feel that would deter them from coming out and doing so. Next is the existing population gets the pattern and the possible increase of the load on public facilities. The current zoning for the property in question is EA, which are five acre tracks that we discussed this evening. Mr. Davenport is and, and planning and zoning is uh, suggesting RA zoning, which are two and a half acre tracks. This represents an, in, uh, a two times density increase of what's currently there. So, you know, I, I'm not prepared tonight to give you a dollar figure on the cost that, uh, to increase the local public facilities, but our assumption is anytime you increase density, especially even at two times, there will be some greater demand there for public facilities. Next is weather change to changing conditions make the passage of the proposed amendment reasonable. There have been no development changes in the area to warrant such a severe departure from the current zoning designations that are currently deemed permissible. The comprehensive plan, which was just adopted this past October a month ago, we believe support this request is unreasonable as well as it is maintained as large lot development and rural character area. Next, whether the proposed change will adversely influence existing conditions in the neighborhood or the community at large. We certainly believe as a group that if zoning is introduced into an existing neighborhood or community that is not a municipal zoning designation, then we do have concerns with the adverse conditions that will present, such as we spoke up, we spoke up already, and such as diminished property values or the beginning of diminished property values and increased traffic and the like. Next, potential impacts on the environment included, but not, but not limited to drainage, wetlands, groundwater recharge areas, endangered wildlife habitats, soil erosion and sedimentation, floodplains, air quality, and water quality and quantity. Now, I notice that it's already been said the engineering county engineering folks did approve this, uh, so I'm assuming they think this would be a minimal impact on the, on the community. However, I do want to make the point that those type of things, uh, those type of attributes mentioned above are reasons folks do move into the area and, and, and like the large lot development. So we feel any impact to any of that could be 
uh, in the detrimental to the area. Next, the cost required of the public in providing, improving, increasing, or maintaining public utilities, schools, streets, public safety necessities when considering the proposed, the proposed change. Once again, we're making an assumption that higher density is allowed and there will be impact on the streets, infrastructure, infrastructure, improvements, and the like. You know, I mentioned the school system. I would think that that would probably be normal uh, to the school system as well. Next, whether the proposed change will be a deterrent to the value or improvement of development of adjacent or nearby property in accordance with existing regulations. This is such a large departure from the rural residential zoning. We definitely believe that proposed zoning can be deterrent to current and future values of the neighborhood. We believe that the rural charm that we now experience that attracts folks to large lot development will start to be diminished. Whether the proposed change is out of scale with the needs of the neighborhood in Alliance County, we definitely believe that the proposed zoning is out of scale with the needs of the neighborhood. It is inconsistent, it is incompatible with current and future development trends. Large lot development is currently happening in our community, and we certainly believe strongly that allowing such a density actually centered, as I've mentioned earlier, right in the center of our neighborhood will begin the diminishing large lot development in the area. Whether the proposed change will constitute a grant of special privilege to the individual owner as contrasted with the adjacent or nearby neighborhood with the general public. And here's how we view that. Right now, as we said, the current piece of property is on EA, which is five acre tracks. You go to R20, R21 zoning as requested, that is 10 times the density home density that is there right now. Again, we spoke of Mr. Davenport's recommendation of two and a half uh, acre tracks. That's two times greater than the home density that is allowed right now. So when you look at that, and you go from where you are now to five acre tracks to one and a half acre, acre track, 10 times the home density that is allowed. So whether intended or not, we certainly feel that it does present itself as a special privilege. This is uh, the extent to which the proposed zoning decision is consistent, consistent with the adopted Greater Lounge Comprehensive Plan. The zoning that is proposed is definitely inconsistent with the comprehensive plan that was adopted last month. Our neighborhood remained depicted as a rural residential character area, and honestly, we can't imagine what could have transpired in a month for there to be consideration of losing that rural character and allowing a non-permissible zoning, which will be precedent setting, and we believe will open the door that will never be closed again. As I stated at the beginning of my presentation, uh, we're not a, a neighborhood or a community that does not support development. We are a community that will support common sense, zoning and development. We're, we're a community that, that will support <coughs> planning and zoning that has positive rewards for all involved. We are a neighborhood and a community that will support zoning and, de and development that meets the current character requirements of the neighborhood. And because our 21 zoning does not meet any of those criteria, our neighborhood strongly opposes uh, the proposed zoning variance of R21. Thank you, thank you for your time this evening. We certainly appreciate it. Hope is that to allow this area to continue to grow as it was planned and intended to do so in the form of large lot developments, thus maintaining the inviting rural flavor of our area. Thank you. Have, have as far uh, as, as far as the aerial, did you did you you said you say you live in a corner lot? Did you come into the subdivision? Uh, no. The second entrance. Second lot. Right here. Or left, right here. Okay. Right. Jason, just a quick question to you when Mr. Barber's there. Did I understand that one acre lots that offers on the table? It has been mentioned, yes, sir. It's on the table for y'all, absolutely. I know you want me to say that I will support one acre lots, and I cannot do that right now. I'll support two and a half acre lots. 
But it's on the table. I'm just curious. It is on the table. Mr. Barber, you see this this revised one acre flat they showed us tonight? As I stated, things have kind of changed consistently with this project, so I'm not abreast of all the changes. Okay, so but you said that the neighborhood number one fear is density. Density is a problem for us, but also concerning it is property values okay. and traffic, just like any other neighborhood would have. Just, just me and you talking. I, uh, sure. So, would you still have the same heartburn from going from 36 to 24 lots with seven of those lots fronting Thompson Road? Right? Yes, sir. We concur with Mr. Davenport's conclusion of two and a half acre tracks. What heartburn do you have if we approve two and a half acres with a 1,200 minimum square foot house? What? Well, I didn't know we were going to talk about that. No, I mean, he, he, said, he said he did it. He don't. This is a point of order. Now. Yeah, I don't yeah, agree. That's a point of order. You're doing some selling. I know you're badgering the man. I'm not badgering the man. Please stop. 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 I'm not badgering the I think Mr. Davenport is okay. exactly correct in the fact that the market will dictate what needs to be built in that area. Okay. Mr. Barber, if we will, can we take about a three minute break just to just have a breath of fresh air? And I'll, I'd like to just show you this if you don't mind. I'm going to keep asking questions. I'd rather, I'd rather go ahead and ask Way questions. Up, now. If we, we thought we were going to be first on the agenda, we got to post. Oh, okay. It's going to be the okay. Any questions? Agenda. Yes, sir. We got we got one permission to take a quick break. Okay, okay. Gary <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mr. I need to, if, if I, I seem that way to you, I need to apologize to you. That was not my intent at all, sir. And I do, if I come across that way, I apologize to you and the whole community. I did not mean to jump across that way. I understand. Yeah. But we're not land density and we're not going to discuss I understand. the home that. Not really I, I, just, that's fine. I just want to make sure that, that you accept my apology. Sure. Just to tell you that this development is definitely inconsistent with the comprehensive plan that was just developed last month. And again, we can't imagine what's happened in 30 days that we need to be considering our 21 zone. Mm -hmm. How were you informed of the development of this project? Well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, since I live on the corner, a few weeks back, I noticed some folks out there in, 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 the, uh, in the parcel that's up there. Um, it was over there. And I watched them for a couple of days, and finally, with curiosity, got the best of me, so I stopped one morning on the way to work and asked, what are you doing out here? And they stated that they were just surveying for those, some subdivision. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's when we began to call all the folks and they were comments to that before we get you know, what was going on, because we, we didn't know what was going on. So there has not been any sort of outreach as far as communication between the neighborhood groups. Clearly, there is a large group. Once we realized what was going on, we did. We, we all met together as a meeting in the neighborhood to discuss what we felt we needed to do. Um, again, we just strongly feel this is just, you know, we want to save this rural residential area as a comprehensive plan of this. And we don't believe that large lot development is over in our area. We certainly support large lot development. Sure. Mr. Barber, we appreciate you coming forward tonight. You were very well prepared. We appreciate you representing your community, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. That was my understanding too, That's Commissioner Zaman. I, I exactly. specifically asked him about if he would take a smaller lot size. He said no. Mm -hmm. If I could, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
please. Between Hayhower and Stone Creek. Yes, sir. West of 41. Can you tell me where there's R21 at? Um, <laughs> If you look on this map, north of the red lines, those uh, peach-colored pieces of property, there's some undeveloped R-21 zoning right here on the border of Hayhire. That is the nearest R-21 zoning to the property, right here on the border. And that's on the east side of 41, correct? Oh, I'm sorry, that's on the west side of 41. It is on the west side. Where's yes, my city? 41. 41 is on the very eastern edge of that red line where that kind of red dash line is coming up. So 41 runs uh, through the property here. This is 41. And then right here is the nearest R21 zoning, which has not yet been developed. It's on the south side of Payhar. And the subject property, sir, is right here. So that's okay. the subject property. curb and gutter in Lowndes County is becoming more and more prevalent to protect trees such as that. That's the reason it was done that way. Uh, and to uh, uh, see, uh, we asked the question about one acre lots of staff and was told no, that that was, was not being proposed <coughs> at all. And all of a sudden we get a drawing tonight. The first thing you're going to do is jerk out that, that tree line along there. Uh, I, 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 it seems to me that they're holding the tree line hostage. Uh, it's a beautiful road along there with the canopy, partial canopy. Uh, you know, I agree that Lowndes County must develop and must grow, but we must do it for the county, and that's the only reason, is for the people of the county. So, uh, I just can't see going in and, and tearing out that entire buffer along there uh, just because you, it's easier to work with or whatever. Uh, I personally would like to see two and a half acre lots there, but I realize that that may not happen. So, you know, I just think that we need to really look at this. Uh, the 41 corridor between North Valdosta Road and, and 41 there to Hay Hour is growing rapidly. 
things, and we need to watch what we put in there. If we don't, uh, like Mr. Barber said, we're going to open a gate we can't close, and we'll have a flood of the, the uh, smaller houses. I know they sell better, but that's not what we look for. We're looking for developing Lowndes County in a proper way. Thank you. No, no further discussion, we will take a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Wilson, Mr. Wilson. first of all, I want to say I know for a fact that Mr. Stoker builds very good houses, builds very good subdivisions, and I don't believe that's the issue here today. I did ask him if we would, he would entertain a smaller lot size. He did say no. Uh, and based on the... Uh, development on the west side of 41 there's very minimal it's right on the edge of it of r21 so i think it's going to be out of scale out of character and you're going to be setting a precedence on that side therefore i make a motion that we deny recommend denial of this request we have a motion for denial of the request do we have a second i have a second commissioner Raker. any further discussion on the motion there being none all in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seven zero, Mr. Carmel. Motion to add. Oh, that's right, Mr. Yes. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank yes, you sir. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks for your patience.